All right, joining me today on Oral Sessions, we've got the Bellator featherweight champ, Chris Cyborg. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me on your show and happy, excited for my next fight. Thank yeah, you. Okay, so what is like what is going on in your world? Because you need people to fight. Who do you want to fight? What's going on? You know, the one thing is very nice at Bellator. I have a lot of girls in my division. Mm -hmm. And I have it already scheduled for my next fight, but I, the, the, I, no, no announce yet. Sorry, my dog is no, no announce yet. Uh, but uh, we are already have a schedule. You can't give us a little sneak peek of who it's going to be. I can't. I can have to okay. wait to the promotion. Yes, I would like to for sure. We'll all have to wait. Um, well, I think one thing that seems a little bit interesting is um, maybe something down the line with you and Clarissa Shields. In some capacity, is that something that you'd be interested in? You know, uh, Clarissa Schultz came from box and she's going to start her career in MMA. You know, um, we are friends, but if it sometimes in the line is happened, we fight each other. You know, for sure it's going to be professional. But I didn't see this, you know, happen soon or, you know, or maybe later. But if it happens, you know, you just have to be professional, be aware of both sides and do a great fight for the fans. Absolutely. Okay, so there wasn't a ton of women ahead of you when you were getting your start in the MMA world. Who were some of the people that you were looking to for inspiration that made you be like, hey, that's a thing that I want to do and dominate in? You know, the reality, I, I never have a dream to be a fighter. You know, before I was athlete and I played handball in my all my teenager time in the 12 to 19. And the one coach is watching me play handball and he came to talk to me after the game. He said, I think you can be a great fighter. And I look at him surprised because I never think be a fighter before. And then he said, came to my gym. We're going to uh, we're gonna teach some stuff to you, my tie, you know, some boxing. And it's okay. But, you know, I was never have a dream to be a fighter. And then I did one class in my tie. I said, this is cool. And I think I trained in three months and I told the coach, I would like to do one fight for see how it's work. Wow. Only after three months of training, yes. you're like, I'm ready to go. Put me in coach. <laughs> yeah. Because I think because I, I always, in my career, I always compete. You know, everything I compete, I started to compete at 12 years old. And then for me, it's just a, one challenge for me. Mm -hmm. And then I told him, you know, I'd like to do one fight. And then in six months, I did my first fight. I lost that fight. You know, I dislocated my elbow at that time. Right. But I, I always feel like, man, I, I born to do this. I love it. I think all the sports I did before I played soccer, mm -hmm. I did the track, uh, uh, running. I did, I did a lot of sports in my career. I did basketball, you know, and a lot of things I did when I was a teenager. And I think when I started fighting, I say, you know, I born to be a fighter. You know, I think all the sports helped me build me who I am today. How did your coach watching you play handball go, you should fight people? Were you just like aggressive on the field? Like, what do you think made that light bulb go off for him or her? Actually, it's not the coach, the, the handball. It's the one father, the one kid, we, when we play each other, he's watching me and it is, he's in, uh, inside the mix my shorts. Thing, and then he told me, I think you can be a great fire, fire, uh, fighter. And... My, my handball coach is not happy because uh, he lose me. <laughs> all the time he tell me, he lose me. So as you're playing all of these sports, I mean, you just rattled off a bunch of the sports that you were playing and dabbling in and being successful in. Were you kind of on a path to be like, hey, how can I just make being an athlete my career? I mean, that can be a bit of a difficult thing along the way, especially given some sports for female athletes in particular as well. Was that something you were thinking that you really wanted to find a way to turn this into a career in some capacity? You know, the beginning, the beginning when I started training, I play handball, you know, in Brazil is very bad. Handball is not have a lot of support. And we are was the best team, the handball. We were very good in Brazil. And, but it's on for Europe game. And, and I, 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 already, I already have a lot of scholarship when I go to school, high school, university, from, from the, the, the handball. You know, I really have a plan to be athlete, but I was not have a plan to be a fighter, you know, but, but I always have in my mind, you know, be a bit little because, you know, I love compete. I love training. And I, I, would, I have in my mindset, I would like to be a, be an athlete and just be a fighter is just different world, but you continue doing the same thing, training every day and yeah, be example. 
Um, so you had, you said you had scholarships to, to go to university. What were you studying when you went to school? Uh, education, physical. Oh, so you should be like a gym teacher. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. All right. So no matter right. what you were working in sports, no matter yes. in any way. Yes. That's great. Uh, okay. So what do you think of the state of women's MMA right now? I mean, things are going really well. Things are moving in the right direction. What do you want to see? change in women's MMA or some matches that you want to be a part of? You know, I believe the good thing happened is uh, like before, only it was main sport. No, a lot of girls would like to watch. And after that, when you start doing women's MMA, the girls start to like watch. It's like a family sport now. You know, everybody getting together for city girls fight. This is one cool thing. When I start fighting, I don't have it. so much, uh, so much uh, publicity, so much things, you know, around the women's MMA. And it makes me really very happy how it's growing fast. It's getting better. I have a lot of girls who want to be a fighter. And the one thing I think is good for our sport, maybe uh, open more divisions. Mm -hmm. I think as the division is very far away. It's like uh, 115, 125, 135, 145, 155. I think you can open a little bit more divisions. I know it's going to be more work for the promotion, but I believe it's healthy for the fighters. You know, for not have to lose so much weight, but for the health, and they can. That, that, yes. oh, that whole thing, the the cutting weight and all that, just seems absolutely grueling. It blows my mind what you guys are able to do for your bodies. Uh, what is that process like for you when you're having to cut weight for, before a fight? You know, in the beginning, my career, always the problem is about the what division want to fight. You know, because like, uh, and, and they don't have divisions. Like for me, I walk, I walk like 165, 170, but no, 155 now have. My beginning of my career don't have, doesn't have. You yeah. know, and then I did my first fight in Brazil. I believe it was 140, 145. And yeah, I already struggled for me too. And I don't know, but now I'm, because I'm doing this, I'm going to be like 15 years. It started 2005. Uh, almost 16, but I started learning about my body. You know, I started learning how to lose weight, but safely, you know, I try stay my, my, my weight low. I try not just cut close to the fight, but doing on good, great process. You know, I learned about my body, but I know the young girls didn't know because in the beginning of my career, they didn't know, you know, and I think we can have a more, more conversation with the, the, the girl, female fighters is more difficult. You know, you're a woman too. You know yeah. how difficult to lose weight, you know? Uh, the guy, the guys why say, I can't well, even we can... imagine. I can't imagine yeah. what you guys do. I mean, I want to lose five pounds and I need to like, I can't even think about it. Yes, it's different uh, like men's and women's too because, you know, men's stay one week, no eat, just salad. You can sit and lose a lot of weight. Us, nothing, you know? And like... <laughs> It is crazy. It's crazy. My husband will go for a jog and he, in like the heat in Las Vegas. He's like, I think I just lost five pounds. I'm like, what the hell? It takes <laughs> yeah. like six months to do that. Yes, it's different for women. And then because this, I believe they have a more, more weight class. I think it's going to be good for women. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this brings me, of course, everyone. I mean, I know this has been all over the internet, but talking about Amanda Nunes and yourself. Uh, I mean, obviously you guys are in rival promotions, but is that something that, you would like to revisit at some point again in your career? You know, I, I always, after that loss, I always ask for the rematch. But, you know, I've seen was not the time no one would like to give to me. And the moment in my career, I will see what's the best option for me. And I wait my contract finish and I see what's the option, the great, great promotion for me fighting, not just about respect, but about the pay to the pay better the athletes. And I'm mean, really happy where I'm at uh, Bellator. You know, I but yeah, I know fans would like to watch the rematch. I would like to do this rematch for sure. You know, I was I when I did talk to Scott Coker, the president of the Bellator, I told him, you know, I I have a dream about this fight. I would like to have this fight, maybe cross promotion. He said, Chris, for me, you know, I'm open for do that. I sent some champions from Bellator to rise to fight in Japan. For me, I don't have any problem if the fight, the fans would like to watch this fight. You know, just with the UFC open for do that, we can do that. Or maybe in the end, if Amanda Nunes want to take a, finish her contract, see what's the option she has, you know, see her value, how much she, she, she can make. I think she can make a lot of more, maybe after the, before, uh, outside the UFC. And, and maybe we can fight, make this fight happen, you know, but I really like, I think all the fans would like to watch. 
Oh my God, we're all dying to see that fight 100%. Um, I also saw that uh, after Amanda Nunes and Megan Anderson, you were you parked your van outside the Apex in Las Vegas? You no, know, I have a little problem there, the gas pinch. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> What yeah. happened? Were you just like trolling them or was that like to troll Dana White? Who was that for? Uh, do you know we have our, or we have our um, RV and they have all the sponsor. We always travel with the RV, you know, for support Cyber Nation. We have Cyber Nation ever in the world in Las Vegas too, you know, and I was in Las Vegas. I know I stayed back and forth. I'm moving to Vegas and I have my parking, my, my, my RV there. So you know what? Free market. You know, free market, I'm going to park it close to the, the FC there and leave my my RV there. And it's nice, you know, you see everybody take pictures and see the, the, the RV. It's nice to, to do this. Did they say anything to you? Did anyone from UFC reach out to you to be like, can you get your van away from our property? <laughs> you know, actually, we think uh, we think they're going to tow our car, you know, <laughs> but we already, if they tow, it's it's worth it. It's okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, okay, so getting back to, to you playing in the national handball uh, team, how how does this like what what exactly is handball? Because it's not big in America, but it's obviously big in Brazil. How what can you like break it down for us a little bit? Uh, it's like one. Uh, it's like a game six six against six, like a six. You make a goal uh, with your hand, but is the goal? It's like a soccer goal. Got it. You know, and there's a six against six, and they have a people in the goal, like a, like a seven people. You know, seven, it's a team. It's a huge in Europe. It's huge. Sometimes I tell I play handball, the people understand I play that pinky throw in the wall. No, it's very rough game, like a rough, like it's, you're touching the person, each other for mm-hmm. save. You know, it's, it's a rough game. There's no, there's, there's no like basketball. Basketball is rough too, but if you touch, it's a fall. You know, and the ball didn't leave a little bit. You know, it's it, it, it's it's rough. I think because this is the guy watching me play handball. I say he'd be a great fighter. Yeah. Uh, do you still get to play at all? Do you have like friends th- uh, around you that you still get to play now? Or do you? Have yeah, I have. Online? I still have a friends that play handball and have girls that we play together. Then now compete for Brazil. You know, then very good. And I I think if, I know now. I think in 2016 when I did my my five, my first five UFC, I did my in Curitiba, my city. We play a little bit of the ball. I see my team, some people over there. Now it's everybody young than me, you know, starting uh, handball. But I start to play with Dan over there, and I play a little bit. You know, it's nice. I I you know I have something inside of me. When I play handball, it's a, I know it's a group, a group team. But I have my individual part, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, and I believe it, because I think it works perfect in MMA because this depends on me, you know, because this I start running, you know, I start to doing competition run because mm-hmm. I feel something do by myself too. No, we don't have a team in MMA, we have a team, we need a team, but who's going inside the cage fight, it's you. Yeah. It's not, nobody can do for you, but the, the team behind, yes, we have a great team. But yes, I, I, I play a little bit more, yes. And I say, man, this game is dangerous. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't get injured. I can hurt myself here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I grew up in Canada and I played ringette, which is a lot like hockey. And I'm constantly having to explain to people what it is because they don't know. It's not popular in America. So I sort of feel your pain on that 100%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it like for you growing up in Brazil? What is a childhood in Brazil like? You know, I, I'm not troublemaker. And, you know, when I'm a teenager, I'm a very nerd. Uh, I, I love sport. And then the one thing is nice in school. If you want to continue to play sport, your your grades have to be good. Mm-hmm. If your grades are no good, you can uh, play the sport. And this is one thing just uh, motivate me, you know, for for continue doing better. Uh, my mom worked the whole time, you know. I always stay um, sometimes the babysitter, sometimes by myself. I have a young uh, older brother too, and he plays soccer at the time too, and I always play handball and. Yeah, my, my mom and my dad then divorced, but, you know, we have a great relationship. I always have my dad support me, support us. And he's watching, I think, my first fight, and then he's very getting shocked, never watch again <laughs> in life. He said, this is no <laughs> for me. He won't watch anymore? Nah, he would like to watch after. My mom don't like to, like, 
Sometimes she just came from Brazil to watch the fights and then she disappeared. She didn't watch. She didn't inside the arena, but you cannot find her yeah. because she don't like to watch. I think too much stress. I, I don't like it. See people, I really, like I love who fight. Make me nervous. Yeah, I don't like. I can only imagine. Uh, what did your mom do for a job when she was raising she, you guys? She sell fabrics in Brazil. Okay, got it. Yes. Nice. Um, okay, yes. so when when did you move to the U.S.? Because you became a naturalized citizen in 2016, right? Yes. Yes. I just became one on Thursday. Oh, nice. Congratulations. What a process. How was it for you? How was your process of becoming an American? Did you celebrate? Like, what did you do? Yes, we celebrate. My fiance is so happy. Everybody's so happy. You know, it's a, it's a hard work when you come from a different country. You know, it's when I came to America, I didn't speak any English. And I went to school learning English here. I learned with the people around me inside the gym. You know, it's it's. It's very blessed, you know. I feel very blessed to be. And I knew when the first time I came to America was 2008 for do my. I did my first fight, mm -hmm. and I say, you know, I need to move to America for me can continue my my sport, what I love to do. Because in Brazil, they have a lot of athletes, but don't have the same opportunity opportunity have here. Sure. And then I say, you know, I need to move. I need to move there. And then the first time I supposed to stay just six months learning English and and, and the training. Because here's the, I learned wrestler, wrestling, boxing, you know, if people like here, the sports is more grow than over there. And, and then I, I, I stay, I stay. They have a good lawyer. You know, I have a Thank work God visa, that, right? <laughs> yes. I have a visa work and then they give it because I have a, I want to get my first title. I like it's the first title, Dumas MMA. Um, when I fought Gina Carano in 2009, mm -hmm. my lawyer said, you know, this is the great opportunity to can get a green card. And I got my green card for athlete. And after getting my citizenship. Oh, the, did you have like a, an O one one visa? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. Oh my God. It's so nice to be done with that. We don't have any more yes. work. Yes. You can really celebrate the 4th of July. Did you yes. do that? Did you have like a big yes. 4th of July? Yeah, the 4th of July is huge, you know, it's like a yeah. huge. The first time I went to here, it's nice, everybody happy in the street and the chill, and very cool, very cool. Uh, okay, so you mentioned 2008 was the first time that you came to the United States, and that's when you first started learning English? How was that? You know, I tried, couple, I tried some classes in Brazil, but the, the reality, when you, in the class is different when you come to the place, you know, like you yeah. learn more if you go travel. If you travel and they will speak in English, speaking in any language you want to learn, it's better you travel. And then you see how it work. Because mm -hmm. when you learn English, but you don't know, it makes sense. Sometimes it's not the same pronoun, pronounce the, the here. And, but the first time when I come here in 2008, did my first fight and back to Brazil. And, and I moved, and then I moved in 2009. Like a month, a little a couple of months before Gina got in the fight. Wow. What a yes. journey. That's crazy. Okay. So your very first fight in the United States, I believe was against uh, a friend of the program here on oral sessions and Shayna Baszler. Yes. Yes. I love Shayna. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. She's the best. I mean, so we work together in WWE. Is nice. that... Is that something that you would like to do? Because I've seen you out there putting out, talking to Becky Lynch or Mickey James, whoever. Do you want to dabble into the wrestling world? You know, it's a tough sport. I respect everyone does. You know, I did some training, some training, some girls too doing wrestling. And yes, you know, if I have the opportunity, I like challenge. You know, the beginning of the conversation, I told you I, I like to challenge. You know, and if I have the opportunity, for sure, for me, it's going to be a big challenge, but I'm here for, for, for learning and do the best show for my fans. I think people would love to see that. I know um, when I was doing a bit of research heading into this interview, I saw Samoa Joe, who's just fantastic, but he kind of gave an endorsement for you to come into WWE as well as Sonia Deville, who has an MMA background herself. Uh, but nice. I think there's plenty of people. There's a little bit of depth there. If you wanted to get in there, maybe Ronda, Ronda Rousey steps back into WWE. There's yes. something there. Yes, yeah, maybe the fight you never can show the, the fans, me, Ronda Rousey, and MMA. Maybe we can show the new pro wrestling. That's yes. going to be nice. Yes. Oh, my God. I think people would absolutely lose their minds to see that. They would love it. Um, okay, so a big thing for you is giving back to your community. I mean, that's been a huge thing for you. I mean, after your fight, after winning UFC 222, what you drove around Los Angeles, just handing out 
hamburgers to, to people of need, um, to the homeless, but you also travel to Uganda and you're digging wells to be able to give clean, uh, clean water, um, that you're working in conjunction with uh, fight for the fallen. When did those things start to become, um, important to you? You know, for me, I, I, I'm a Christian believer when in 2006, and for me, I was to, to return it to community, return to people around me. You know, it's important. You know, uh, one thing I always like to ever fight. I, I always pray to see what is important for me can give you back. I feel like the blast cannot stop you. Have to be blessed. If you're getting blessed, you have to bless, you have to flow, you know, yeah. for help the people. And this is, I, I, I believe this. And, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes, okay, we did a video, give it the hamburgers, you know, sometimes I, I really don't like show what to do. A lot of things I, sh I do, it don't show anybody. But sometimes you encourage people to do this, you yeah. know. And the, that day I went to the burger play, to give the burger for the people living on the street. And it's very sad because a lot of people is not from here. Yeah. A lot of people far in the family, different, you know, in another country. They came like us, following mm -hmm. dream. Yeah. You know, and this, that day is, it was very, very, very sad. And yeah, okay, maybe I can, I'm not gonna change the life of them, can just uh, give one hamburger, but you know, share the experience, talk about God for them, give a little hope in their hearts, you know, make them change a little bit. Or uh, you know, I think something like this. And I always like to do, you know, in Brazil, I have a still have projects with kids and can do, they have kids having playing jiu-jitsu, you know, have another kids then the, in one community, the, the parents, when the parents uh, need the help too and don't have nobody to leave the kids, kids stay in the project and learn a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I, I always like to return and give it back. We're doing our event too. I have a MMA event in Brazil. If we give the opportunity for the other athletes can, you know, can can see the dream, can come true, you know, have the opportunity. And the, the name of the event is Cyber Nation Fights. Have the website, you guys can go check it out. And yeah, we're doing it return. You know, I just returned what I received. And then just to show the thing for what's happened with me. What are your trips to Uganda like when you're when you're digging these wells and getting that clean water into these other villages? What is that experience like? You know, that experience I always tell everybody, everyone's supposed to go over there and see that. Like it's it's crazy. I I I, I went there soon after Amanda Nunes fight. And and I lost the fight, of course. I stay a little sad. I stay thinking about a lot. You can change, you can don't change, you know. But then when you I went there, I said, man, that loss is like is nothing close to this. You know, you see kids like semi close the whole week, you know, have close to shower, don't have water, have to walk 20 miles, forget water, you little kids. You see, the, uh, one thing touched me really in my heart is see one kid walk to the to the street for good water, she'd have uh, two, uh, two shoes, but she'd have one sock on. Oh. But she put the one sock, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, even she have just one, she put, you know. One and sock, I, that thing, no socks. Yeah, yeah, the, for me, it, like, touch my heart, even though it's one. And, you know, it's um, just uh, just uh, touch with my heart. I went to that one and celebrated the water, you know. We put the water, there was two water was there, and then the day they, they celebrate, it's nice because I have the opportunity to go over there. They went to with a uh, for fight for forgotten. They really supported the pygmies there, and and it was amazing. It was amazing experience when the water come for out of the, the hole and everybody started drinking the water and make a little party and we danced together. If you guys would like to watch, have it my YouTube. You guys can get the the videos too. It's nice. It's nice. It's. It, it's very cool. You make really happy. You say, man, yes, it's more important. You know, they always don't think it sounds heavy. I stay a long time champion in my career and I'm still champion, but people say, ah, she's the world champion. Yes. Be the world champion. You sound there thinking, say, man, you need something to change the world around you, what, where you're at. You know, yeah. be the champion. The world is big responsible. It's not just hold a title, hold on belt. And I always have this in my 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 mind. I always come to be a world champion. Okay, what you can do? You know, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have to do small things. You know, help somebody across the street. Mm -hmm. I know some go to grocery stuff from somebody. Little things, little things that like be champion the people's hearts. And this is, I think, is more special. Just hold on tighter. 
hold no bells. Really, it's really crazy how much we just take for granted to be able to turn on our faucet and be able to have water and we can shower yeah. and we can boil water whenever we want. Like yeah. it's got to be so eye opening to go to a country like that and be able to see them pump their water for the first time. That's so cool. And then the one thing is amazing that I was just mild. Like then I was just mild over there. Then I was happy. Yeah. You know, no complaints. Like no complaints. And then, then you have to maybe try go whatever every, every year, you know, because we are we complain for little things, not supposed to complain, you know. And yeah. I love that. Um, okay, so it was International Women's Day just recently, and uh, you took to the old Twitter machine um, and giving praise to Scott Coker, the president of Bellator, uh, for giving women a platform when other promoters maybe wouldn't give them a chance. Uh, what what is that like? Speak is that like is that a shot at Dana or something at UFC or is it what, like what? I feel like there's an understory to this. Do you know uh, Scott Coker is is the guy he's the first promoter the women's MMA fight, the main event. You know, he's given the opportunity for women's MMA. They always believe the women's MMA, you know, because you say about Dan White, I always don't talk about him, you know, it is a shout out for Scott. But Dan White is the person, the promoter say the girl's never going to step in the UFC. And yeah. you see the girls, everywhere the girls step, they will be success. This is good. And then, you know, we start fighting in the UFC and then, you know, we see how's, Huge getting, you know, Mos MA, but you know, the first promotion, you know, give it a shout out to Mos MA, it's, it's Scott Coker. Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, I mean, it's great that, I mean, even just you saying when we first hopped on of how many women there are in your division. Um, and I, you've also made it clear that you want to have three fights in 2021. Mm -hmm. You know what? I know one of them you can't tell us about. Are there options for what you want to see some of those other fights be? Um, uh, I uh the next one uh, the next one is scheduled. schedule then all the, I think the next on the line is maybe going to be Julia Bird the one that defended the title she's undefeated eight years and she lost for me that she's coming from the winner you know and she's continue when probably she maybe going to be again um and they have another girls in the line but I believe it is the next step. All right. Uh, also, one last thing that I keep seeing on your Twitter is about Bitcoins. Do you have a Bitcoin? Are you investing in Bitcoins? What's going on? Yes, I do invest in Bitcoins. Funny because a couple of years ago, my fiance said, Chris, you need to invest in Bitcoin. I said, ah, no. And then I say, man, yes, let's do that. And you now you can see how it's growing and then the currency. And then you know, it's, it's, yeah, we invest in Bitcoin. In my website, we make, we can buy a shirt, anything in my website, you can, uh, you can pay with Bitcoin. Yes. With Bitcoin supporters. Crazy. So, okay. So when I don't really understand how Bitcoins work, how much do you have to invest to get a Bitcoin? Is that how it and, goes? You know, the now I think one Bitcoin is like almost 70,000, but before it was so cheap before, like oh very, very God. cheap. Now it's good because the, 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 the Bitcoin thing is now have a lot, have a lot of, but it's, it's, it's no unlimited, like have a limit. Like, yeah. you know, if you don't get it, be a coin and finish it, you're not going to get it. Understand? Damn. Yes. So have yes. you been able to, have you bought things with your Bitcoin yet? I don't buy it. I start saving for me. Yeah. <laughs> I start saving for <laughs> Smart. me. Smart. <laughs> In the Very future, good. maybe trade some stuff, you know? Okay. I'm going to have to look into this. I mean, I've, I've had two different conversations about Bitcoins on this podcast and it looks like it's the future that we need to do it. Yes. Yes. All right. I'll think about it. Uh, well, Chris Cyborg, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Best of luck. I cannot wait to see what this announcement is going to be 